All right, the 49ers need defensive end help in the worst way. We'll look at some trade candidates in our video next. But first, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Corte Madera and Emeryville. They're open from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue you're going to find anywhere. Get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Say hi to Damon, say hi to Mary. Um, and tell them that Krug sent you. All right, let's talk a little bit about the 49ers. This is the Niners' year. It's them and the Eagles in the NFC, the third best team in the league, in the conference. Who knows who it is? To me, it's the Niners and the Eagles and then everybody else. And the Niners are loaded. They're absolutely loaded. This is their best chance at their sixth Lombardi, maybe in years and years and years. But they got a glaring need on the defensive line. Um, their defensive end depth is not what it was a year ago and they badly need help, and we're going to hit some of the candidates they could possibly acquire in a trade. Look at this roster, though. The number one need for the Niners, people talk about the quarterback issue. It's not the quarterback. Brock Purdy's going to be fine, and if he's not, I think the other guys can step in and be good. The Niner O-line, I'm not worried that much about Colton McKivitz. Jake Moody at kicker, not that worried about Jake Moody at kicker. My biggest worry, and I'm not worried at running back, wide receiver, linebacker, quarterback. I mean, they're loaded on all those spots. Their number one issue is the depth of their or lack of depth at their defensive end spot. The D-line is the identity of the team, and the Niners have to have a pass rush to have a good defense. And, you know, in a two-team conference, the 49ers have a great chance to get to the Super Bowl. But, man, they lost a ton when they lost Ebukam, Willis, and Amenehu. In fact, 1,331 snaps walked out the door when that trio left. And those guys averaged 91.6 total snaps combined in the 49ers' three playoff games. And the Niners went out in the free agent market, and they added Cleveland Farrell, who played 492 total snaps with the Raiders last year. He's got 10 sacks in four seasons. They added Austin Bryant. He played 207 total snaps. They added Taco Charlton, who had 67 snaps. That's 767, 66 snaps coming in and 1,331 snaps going out. So the Niners need some help, uh, and they know it. And that's why they picked up Taco Charlton. That's why they just signed Dalen Hayes. Alex Barrett, who was on their practice squad last year, didn't hasn't played since 2020. He's a viable option at defensive end. Kerry Hyder, who's really long in the tooth, he's a viable option at defensive end. And now Robert Beal, who played 368 total snaps at Georgia in his bust out year, he's a viable option. And yet, you know, he's been hurt in camp and hasn't really played the last few days. So let's go through some trade candidates and one team to look for at the cutdown where the Niners might be able to find some defensive end help. Okay, let's talk about some of the trade candidates that are potentially out there. The Buffalo Bills have Boogie Basham, right, the former Wake Forest star. Basham's 25, um, and if you look at Buffalo's depth chart, they're pretty loaded at defensive end. I mean, they got Von Miller, A.J. Espinosa, Greg Rousseau, Shaq Lawson, and they signed Leonard Floyd. And Basham, he's got a little pass rush to him. He's 6'3", 275. He's a bigger defensive end. He's not going to burn the edge, but you could use him inside, outside. You know, you might be able to trade for a Boogie Basham. He's only 25. He's got some upside potential. Um, you know, he's a versatile defensive lineman slash defensive end. Defensive end, defensive tackle. He could be either. Um, he's out there. That's option one. All right, option two. How about Bryce Huff of the New York Jets? He's 25, 6'3", about 255. He's got an awesome first step. He really does. And in 2022, he had 16 pressures, despite the fact he only played in 20% of the defensive snaps for the Jets. Then you look at what the Jets have, and the Jets are pretty loaded at defensive end. You got Will McDonald, the fourth, who's looking great. He looked fantastic the other night against the Browns in the Hall of Fame game. They drafted him in the first round. You got Jermaine Johnson, who was a high first round pick. You got Michael Clemens, the former Texas A&M star, Carl Lawson. They've got a lot of defensive ends, and you might be able to make a trade with, with the Jets for a guy like Bryce Huff. Uh, Bryce Huff would help the 49ers a lot. All right, let's move on to the Commanders. They've got Chase Young. He's 24, former number two pick overall, was the defensive rookie of the year with seven and a half sacks his first year in the league. 
But, man, Chase has struggled to stay healthy. Uh, Washington has opted already not to pick up his fifth-year option, and they've got an awful lot of money tied up in Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, Montez Sweat is due a big contract extension. Heck, I'd take Sweat over Chase Young if I could get him, but I don't think you could get him. Uh, but I'd like to have Chase Young or Montez Sweat, both two young, outstanding pass rush prospects. If Chase Young fulfilled his potential opposite Bosa, you could have a really, really special tandem. All right, let's go to the next guy in the list. How about Jerry Hughes? He's 35. He plays for the Texans. 6'2", about 255, veteran pass rusher. This guy can get it done. Last year, he had 16 starts in the NFL. He had nine sacks. And you look at Houston, they're kind of in a rebuilding mode. And I think if you look at them on paper, it's pretty logical that D'Amico is going to want to commit major reps to their young defensive ends. They got Will Anderson there. They got Jonathan Greenard. Uh, they've got Ali Gay, the former LSU star. Um, and he's looking good in the mini camp. So they've got some defensive ends ahead of, of Jerry Hughes, who's 35. Hughes, in a lot of ways, is the ideal guy. He'd be ideally suited uh, to be on a team like the 49ers and give them some veteran influence. All right. The team that you, the Niners have to look for as well at the cutdown is, is the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Dallas Cowboys are incredibly deep at defensive end. And if Dallas is smart, there's no way in hell they're going to trade with the 49ers. But there's a lot of speculation that with Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons, uh, you know, solidified as the number one, you know, tandem of defensive ends, that Dorrance Armstrong could be available in a trade. Uh, Armstrong's coming off a career year. Dallas is exceptionally deep at defensive end. Trading Armstrong would free up about $5.8 million in cap space for Dallas, and they need cap room because they've got extensions looming for CeeDee Lamb, for Trevon Diggs, and they got another extension just around the corner for Dak Prescott that they're going to have to pay. So Dallas may trade Dorrance Armstrong. I doubt they would trade him to the Niners. If they decide they want to keep Dorrance Armstrong, the, even the guys Dallas has deeper on the depth chart would be of a lot of interest to me at the cutdown. So they have Demarcus Lawrence. They have Micah Parsons. They're not going anywhere. They have Dorrance Armstrong. They may keep him. They may trade him. If they keep him, they also have Sam Williams, a second-round pick from Ole Miss, who's a really, really good pass-rushing prospect. I'd take him in a second. Um, their third-team defensive ends are Dante Fowler and the San Jose State star, Junior Fajoko, who the Niners brought in for the local pro day. Uh, he goes by Viliami Fajoko, but I mean his name is Viliami Fajoko. He goes by Junior. Um, Junior is a really talented pass rusher, about 270 pounds. If he's cut down at the, at, you know, on August 29th at the cut down, I'd be all over him. And then Dallas's fourth string line is also damn good. They got Ben Benagu, the former Indianapolis Colt, and one of my favorite sleepers um, after the draft is Tyrus Wheat, who's an edge rusher from Mississippi State. Now, if they get to the end of camp and Dallas somehow tries to go with the veterans, Lawrence and Parsons and Williams and Armstrong and Fowler, and they decide to try to squeeze Tyrus Wheat or, or Junior Fajoko uh, through waivers to the practice squad, if I'm, if I'm John Lynch, if I'm Adam Peters, I'm pouncing. Those are the two guys I want the most. Tyrus Wheat, Junior Fajoko. If you can add a Wheat or a Fajoko, that would be huge. I'd take Sam Williams. I'd take Dorrance Armstrong. I'd take Dante Fowler. But Dallas is the team to watch at the cutdown on the 29th of August because they've got defensive end depth. They've got cap issues. They've got big extensions looming. Armstrong maybe had in a trade, or Williams, Wheat, or Fajoko uh, could find themselves on the waiver wire. And if they do, those are the guys to pounce on if you're the 49ers. All right, hope you enjoy the video. Niners just are a defensive end or two away from having a dominant team and go headed back to the Super Bowl. Um, but they need that defensive end depth because they're thin there, and they, this is what makes their entire defense go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show, and thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.